Hey everybody, it's the Northwoods Fairy here, and this is another Reddit video or scary story video, so I'm going to read some of the scary stories that Google says are some of the scariest ones out there. And I might also tell you some of my scary stories. I don't know how well it compares to Reddit. But, um, this is going to be a series that I do. And like I said, if you have a, sto a scary story that you'd like me to read on here, um, maybe it'll cause some kind of a conversation. That'd be cool. I have scary stories too. I just don't know how scary they are to other people. It was scary to me. But anyways... So, um, if you have a scary story or some kind of weird story that you want to share with me for me to read, or if you have your own channel and you want me to, um, comment on it, listen to it and comment on it, let me know in the comments, my email, or on my Instagram, truckchicksHK. Alright, so, cheers. And let's turn on the ambience for Reddit. Okay, I'm not going to lie. This color on my backlight, it has so many different options. But it kind of scares me a little bit because it goes red and then it goes dark. So it's freaking me out. But I'm going to continue reading anyways. Um, so this one is called... Redditors, make sure my phone stays on. Redditors who go into people's houses for their job. What is the strangest, creepiest, strangest, creepiest thing you've ever seen or experienced? Okay, and I am drinking beer right now. I don't usually drink beer, but I just felt like it, so don't judge me, okay? This is uh, a little spooky. Okay, so this first story says I am a firefighter slash EMT, so it's pretty normal to find a dead body, but one will always stay with me. There was this middle-aged guy who lived in his van out in a parking lot somewhat out of town. He never bothered anybody, so the police just let him stay there. It was around the middle of July in Arizona, so about 105 to 110 degrees heat. And we got a call to go check on him. Nobody had seen him for a while and somebody had complained of a foul odor, odor coming from his van. We all knew what we were going to find, but nothing could prepare us for what we actually came across. I opened the back door to his van and a cloud of flies flew out so thick you could see through it. I was immediately punched in the face by the stench of death, and when the flies cleared out, we finally got a look at what was in there. The guy had been dead for th at least two weeks, and his cat had survived by eating the fleshier parts of his body. I've seen my fair share of dead bodies, but something about a guy who had been in a van for two weeks in Arizona, summer heat, with cats eating his body, that just sticks with you. I used to volunteer for a wildlife rescue and did a pickup at a very elderly woman's house where she had found a baby bird. When I got there, she carefully uncovered it from the towel she placed it in and it was just a chestnut. That's funny, kind of. Alright, so we need to find more. 
Let me find another one. That one was a short one. Okay, so this is another camper, um, another thread. And it says, campers of Reddit, what is the scariest slash creepiest slash most disturbing thing that has happened to you in the woods? <clears throat> and this one said, when I was younger, around 14 or 15 years old, my family used to camp at a state park. Every night, my friend and I would walk through the woods we called the Ritual. This particular night, we decided to walk further into the woods than usual. We had flashlights, but we liked to try and navigate through the woods with them turned off. We were about a half a mile from the nearest campsite when we heard soft whispering behind us. Obviously, we hit the flashlights and spun around, didn't see anything, so we kept walking and we hear it again. This time, we stop and look around a bit before we decided to head back to our campsite. Then we see what's happening, what's whispering. It's a lady crawling on the ground, whispering random words. She was wearing dark clothes and was covered in dirt. When she sees that we notice her, she stands up and declares that she's looking for her campsite. We ended up walking her to the campground and tried helping her find her group. Turns out she was just a super drunk high and got lost trying to find a bathroom. High and got lost trying to find a bathroom. Her friends didn't even notice she was missing. And if we didn't go that far into the woods, she would have been lost all night. It was pretty creepy. Hmm. I don't know about that one. It wasn't really that interesting. Sorry. I'm just gonna... I mean, one's on here. To all travelers, what is your creepiest travel story? Hmm. This is a tricky one. Alright everybody, let's hope that this is a better one, okay? This question is, when driving at night, what is the scariest, most unexplainable thing you have ever seen? Alright, and this person says, scariest only because it nearly killed me. Driving back from a late high school football game that I was covering, I was going through a very remote section of highway and farmland. I was a little zoned out, but the road was straight and wide for a while. Um, I was going along at a good clip when I was vaguely aware that there was suddenly something in my way but it was almost just a sense of it, not anything I could really see. Something just didn't look right, and I could tell hitting the brakes was not going to help. So I swerved into the opening lane and passed something large and hadn't been blocking my lane, that had been blocking my lane. I still don't know what it was, but it was large. I got turned around and went back slowly to see what the hell I had barely missed. When I got close enough to see better in my headlights, there were two very large black cows. They were big enough that my hatchback would have to been totally crushed if I'd hit them, and it could have easily been a fatal accident for me and the cows. I called the local police and they sent a car out while I waited to make sure no one else hit them. Even though the cows wandered off the road a ways and I hadn't seen another car for a while, they got there, they knew the cow was belonged to, and called the guy up. All pissed off because apparently it happened more frequently than they liked. Damn cows nearly killed me. 
it's kind of lame. As a truck driver, I've had some bad experiences hitting things, especially pregnant uh, mule deer. So that to me doesn't faze me. That's just. Let's see here. Let's try this one. About 20 years ago, I was driving home from a late wedding DJ gig. I was driving south on a major interstate when, which was relatively empty at 2.30 a.m. or so. At one point in the narrows, the retaining walls on each side get very high as the highway snakes underneath overpasses. Out of nowhere, a young woman jumped down from the retaining wall onto the highway and directly in front of my car. I hit the brakes hard, came to a complete stop, and nearly slammed into her. She looked up, ran to my passenger door, and got in looking terrified. She looked between 16 and 20 years old, long blonde hair, and her clothes looked a little dirty. Not homeless dirty, but like she'd fallen down a few times. I just need to call my mom, she said. I tried to calm her down and began moving back down the highway and be behind me about 50 feet i see another figure jump down onto the highway out of my rear view window i didn't mention this to her and she didn't look back or see the person i sped up and went about four or five exits south she kept saying over and over i just need to call my mom this was before most people had cell phones, so I told her I would take her to one of the 24-hour grocery stores and she could call her mom. I asked her if she needed money for a payphone, what was wrong, etc. She said nothing other than I just need to call my mom. I pulled up to the grocery store and stopped. She got out quickly, but not running, then ducked into the grocery store. She didn't say a word to me or look back. I pulled into the gas station across the street and called 911 and told them the entire story and let them know the young woman was inside the grocery store and a description of her. I have no idea what happened. I don't know why she did that. What happened to her? Who the figure behind us on the highway was? Nothing really made me super uneasy. I think I did the right thing. I would have tried to do more, but she seemed very fragile emotionally and somewhat afraid of me. I'm a guy, so I wanted her to just be able to get to where she needed to be. That is awfully strange if someone jumps onto the interstate and someone's following them like that. Not very scary. Let me find another story for us here, shall we? No, I think I might have found a good one, but I'm not sure. Because I thought these would be a lot scarier than they are. Okay, so this one says, I used to do work. I used to work during doing maintenance at it at historic properties. There was a historic house museum I worked at when I wasn't open to the public. It was part of a whole landmark site where there was a visitor center with offices and the house was about a half a mile up a dirt road in a wooded area. Sometimes I worked with a crew, but there were a lot of times I was there alone. I was alone, working alone to get ready to replace some electric work on the exterior of the house. I went inside, tested it, it was off. I locked the doors and went outside to work. After about an hour later, I got down from my ladder and started walking around the house and then one of the lights inside the house turned on. I started to freak out but thought maybe someone was playing a joke on me. 
I called the visitor center on my walkie-talkie and confirmed that the only other person who was working that day was still there and hadn't left, and that all the keys to the house were present and accounted for. That's when I freaked out and ran half, half a mile up to the office. I made my co-worker come back with me to check out what was going on, but when we got to the house, the light was off again, but the bulb was still warm. All the doors were still locked, and the circuit was still off. Still gives me shivers to this day. Light turns on by itself in old house when the electricity is off, which is literally impossible and super spooky. Okay, so my family owns a decent sized horse boarding facility and when we first had it going we used to do bed check as a family. Bed check is just making sure all the lights and fans were off as well as looking at the horses for injuries and if they had blankets during the winter while well, we had good, just got them back from eating out. It was a moonless night during fall as we stepped out of the truck, this large light gray mass stood up and took off, looping towards our pastures. It was about the size of a single cab pickup truck. It made no noises other than it was hitting the ground as it ran. The only other proof that it was real to us was the horses that were turned out that night screamed and stampeded across the pastures. It had jumped into. We didn't we did a double count of all the horses that night and not a single one was missing. I still have yet to see it again and I hope I never do or at least there is some explanation for it. Okay, this one says, when I was in U uni, I lived by myself. It was a nice little studio behind a house in a fairly decent area. I would honestly think nothing of walking places at night. There was a 24 hours McDonald's and a 7-Eleven that would walk, I would walk to often between 12 a.m. and 3 a.m. since I was a massive night owl. Well, one day after finishing an essay up at about 2 in the morning, I decided I was hungry but didn't really have anything easy to cook. So I decided to walk down to the 7-Eleven and grab a pie or something. However, as soon as I opened my door, I was overcome by a suffocating feeling of fear. My heart started pounding. I started shaking the works, telling myself that this was ridiculous. I walked out to the street with the intent to still go. That was as far as I got. I was terrified for no reason that I could understand, but no less intensely despite that, I ran back inside and ate dry cereal. Later... The next day, I heard about a group of drunk guys that were causing havoc down near the intersection at the 7-Eleven. They'd beaten up some, someone from my uni, even though I can't explain it. I'm convinced something bad would have happened to me that night if I had ignored that feeling and gone away. Well, I can try to find more scary stories on here but i'm actually going to tell a few scary stories of my own and i don't know how scary they are but i will say that uh for me it was so since i was little i've had weird things happen you know here and there and you're told it's your imagination and whatever someone believes is fine by me but when you experience something, it's kind of hard to let it go and to think, oh yeah, it's just my imagination. But anyways, so as I got older, I, um, 
I was living at my dad's house one time, and I didn't, he had an ex-girlfriend living there with her grandkids, and one of her grandkids that I actually got along with told me that the house was haunted, but there was always so many people there, her grandkids, um, her, uh, her grandkids' friends and everything like that, that when I lived there with them, I never experienced anything. Well, as soon as um, my dad kicked them out because he didn't get along with his girlfriend anymore, and then my sister, my older sister with her kids and her husband moved in there for a while, and I hadn't been there, and then eventually they moved out and I was going from place to place like um, I was kind of homeless because I was in and out of a relationship and um, I was in the process of getting an apartment so while I was there I had some weird things happen to me like uh, my friend came over and me and her were watching movies upstairs in my room we decided to go to Taco Bell and uh, come back and we left the light in my room on well when we came back the light was off so we thought someone had gone in the house or came over and turned the light off well nobody had come over and the light was shut off and my friend who believes in this because she um her culture is more accepting of it she's hispanic and her culture is more accepting of things like this like if i told her i believe in ghosts or i think i've seen something like i don't really get scared of ghosts but if i told her i seen something or felt something she would believe me so she was like you know that is weird and i feel something really creepy here and and then I started, after that, having, like, dreams where I felt like I couldn't move. And, um, by the w my bedroom, my bed was facing the windows. And I remember peeking out of my eyes one time, and I seen this figure that looked like a skeleton. And it was kind of looking out the window. And it wasn't doing anything, just looking out the window. But it looked really creepy. And then I kept on hearing this noise come from the vent, and growing up with vents my whole life, I know vents can make weird noises, but this just wasn't normal. And it was like a, uh, like that. And coincidentally, the room that it was coming from was actually, um, turns out a guy that died there, his room. And when I, you know, but I didn't know this at the time, then I had visions in my head of him shaking, like an old man shaking like this, like he had Alzheimer's or something. And um, I also had an incident where I came home and there were big, huge flies attracted to the um, lights in my room and sometimes in the kitchen and there was this on and off again really horrid smell like death and it would just come and go and we tried to figure out if an animal died somewhere under a crawl space in the house or underneath a, a deck and we couldn't find anything but the flies when they came into my room it was like i looked up and there was three and i was like oh my gosh the windows closed, where are they coming from? Well, I looked around and I look up again and there's seven to ten. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And they were huge. And then the smell came. And my dad wasn't home. I was there alone. So I ran off. And even though I wasn't getting along with them at the time, I ran to an ex-boyfriend's house. And I was too scared to be home alone, at least until my dad got home. And um, I came there the next day. And I put some traps, some fly traps with some stinky stuff on it because they're more attracted to that. I got it from work. And no flies became attached to it. And I didn't see flies again for a while. Um, the smell would still come and go. And finally, I couldn't take anymore. So I told my dad, I'm like, Dad, I know you don't believe in ghosts, but 
he believes and then he doesn't believe. He's not like, you know, super believing in it. He was like, I was like, Dad, but I keep having all these creepy things happening. And he was like, oh, well, in the room downstairs where my nephews, the boys, we call them, the boys uh, used to sleep. There was a guy that was old and he died and he was here for three weeks before anyone found him. The next door neighbors came to check on him because they were worried. And then it hit me like, oh my gosh, this guy died a very horrible death. Nobody cared about him. The shaking was like him telling me to notice him. Um, and then my little nephew, one of them, I do believe has some kind of an ability because he would tell me, Auntie, I see him. And nobody told him about this, a guy dying there. He would not go in that room. He was scared of that room where the guy died. Um, he would tell me he couldn't sleep at night because he kept on seeing the guy, described him and told him, told me and told me things and I felt it too. And then he told me, Auntie, he doesn't like you. He's going to destroy your car, which really creeped me out. And, uh, you know, I never, I stopped being creeped out after a while, but I felt really bad for my nephew because he's just a little kid and they are really hard to make understand. So, um, and then I lived in Kentucky once and I was down there and I was having really bad dreams at the time. My brain was really going through a really hard time and I had this dream and I'm only going to say one part of it because it's so scary for me. Um, I don't like it. I don't like to talk about stuff too creepy that happened to me in particular. But I had a dream where I left my body and I went from the one of the rooms to... There's two living rooms in that house. It's a double wide and the li both living rooms were pretty decent size. And I went and I looked in the living room and I seen this rainbow of colors and this creature that looked like the predator but it didn't feel friendly so then I tried to get back onto the bed um, back into my body and something even creepier happened and I don't even want to mention it but I've had quite a few scary freaky experiences and I can't seem to find anything super scary on Reddit yet. I think I need to actually look and plan it a little bit better. But for now, this is going to be my second Reddit slash scary story reading. I hope you guys enjoy. And I will be doing much more of this. Please feel free to write to me. comment, give suggestions, um, anything like that, it would be really helpful. All right. Thanks guys.